have, uh, this is our last day to hear measures before the lateral. We have a small bill to hear and discuss today, Senate Bill 131, relating to um, food labeling, this is the GMO labeling bill. Uh, we're really grateful to have everyone's input. We have a lot of testifiers. Uh, why don't we introduce ourselves, because I think people are interested in who's part of the hearing right now. I'm Josh, I'm Green, Big Island, ER Doc, um, Health Chair. Gil Revere, Vice Chair of Agriculture from North Shore, Oahu. Great. And we'll be certainly joined by others. Our hope today is to hear everyone's testimony. We'll, we'll start with the organizations and then we'll move into individuals' uh, testimony. Uh, anybody that wants to come up, please definitely share your monotone with us. Uh, because we have so many testifiers, it is in general best if you add to the dialogue. If it's something that's been said already identically, um, we do have your testimony, uh, but you're always, of course, honored. We're honored to have you say your piece, whatever it is. Um, but we tried our very, very best to have everybody be able to come up who did attend. So that sometimes is a challenge if we only have a few hours. So we'll start with, uh, on this bill, 131, uh, Keith Kawoka, DOH. Hi, afternoon, Chair Green, Chair Redman, Vice Chair Revere. I'm not going to keep calling, but my name is Peter Oshiro. I'm the Program Manager for the Department of Health, Sanitation, Food and Drug, and Vector Control Programs. So I'm here to give the testimony of the Department of Health. Uh, before I start, I just want to say to the audience and everybody, I love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start with my testimony. Um, the Department respectfully opposes this bill. Passage of this measure will require substantial resources. Uh, the department will need to hire numerous experts in the field of biotechnology and genetics, as well as the multi-billion dollar analytical equipment currently not available at the department. Um, the department does not object, in principle, to labeling policy to enhance public awareness of the absence or presence of genetically engineered food or food ingredients in Hawaii's markets. However, the department, the department is not in a position to enforce such legislation because practical and legally defensible analytic methods to detect any and all genetic modifications do not exist currently in our state. Um, testing for common genetic markers could easily be evaded, and furthermore, we do not conduct genetic engineering work and therefore do not possess the requisite scientific expertise, capacity, equipment, and experience to test and determine whether a suspected food or food product has been genetically engineered at a confidence, at a confidence that would withstand legal challenges. So currently, there is no conclusive science evidence of negative health effects associated with the consumption of genetically engineered food or food products as determined by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. And as such, we do not believe such labeling is a health issue and thus do not support any such program being assigned to the Department of, to a Department of Health to administer. Um, the Department would like to focus its limited sources in areas such as controlling the incidences of foodborne illnesses and by inspecting establishments at appropriate frequency. Um, thank you for the opportunity to testify. Um, Scott Enright, Department of Ag. Good afternoon, Chair Green, Chair Rudin, and committee members. Scott Enright, Chairperson for Hawaii Department of Agriculture. Chairs, the Department will stand on our written testimony and respectfully oppose this measure. I'll be around all afternoon to answer questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. We do appreciate it. Uh, Sharon Menor, McNamara, from uh, the Chamber. Opposition. Next, we had Gary Hoosier. Councilman from Kauai. It's a nice room. Thank you. Thank you. Good uh, afternoon, uh, Senators. And I, I, I will just be real brief and stand in my testimony in support. And I applaud you for moving this issue forward. You know, it's a basic uh, right to know issue. People have the right to know what they eat. And I think you put the burden on the industry. You don't put the burden on the department. You tell the industry they have to label, and then you know they label. And then if they get caught cheating, then we can deal with that at that time. But, but just put the burden on the industry, have them label, and give the consumers the right to choose what they're eating, and let them make that informed choice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councilor. Next, I have Ashley Lucas. Aloha, Chair, Senators, thank you. Um, I stand on my written testimony. I just wanted to raise a few points that I saw in some of the testimony provided today. Um, 
Obviously, labeling genetically engineered foods is a basic consumer right to know issue. Um, 63 other countries currently label, and um, the U.S. is leading the path at the state level to start uh, because of FDA inaction and, and, and labeling. For 13 years, um, the federal government has had the authority to label, and they have not acted on it. And so it is the state's clue, Yana, to pick up where there is federal inaction and respond to what citizens would like to see in the marketplace. Um, the Star Advertiser did a poll last year showing that upwards of 70% of Hawaii residents, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, all support labeling. And we don't label foods because they're dangerous. We label because people have the right to make informed consumer decisions, and it's the government's role to provide the basic framework to do that. So thank you very much for the opportunity to testify, and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. William, uh, William Steiner, who's in support, Bernadette uh, Mizaluka from Hawaii Crop, Hawaii Crop Improvement Association. I'm oh, sorry, that's Bernadette, and then my fault. President of the Hawaii Crop Improvement Association and HCIA is a, is a nonprofit organization that promotes ag biotech to help farmers and communities succeed. Um, through education, collaboration, and advocacy, we work to ensure safe and sustainable food supply, support responsible farming practices, and build a state economy. HCIA respectfully opposes Senate Bill 131. For more than 20 years, the science, scientific consensus which includes such organizations as the American Advancement of Science, the American Medical Association, the European Union, the National Academy of Science and Crop Science Society of America support genetic education <coughs> and underscore its safety. In addition, these scientific studies were further um, validated by two decades of experience in over 60 countries. We assert that Senate Bill 131 is not necessary because there are already labels in place that allow consumers informed choice. As a marketing strategy, some food manufacturers have added verbiage in their labels already touting the lack of genetically engineered ingredients in their food. And consumers have bought these organic products to the tune of $30 billion in annual sales. State-mandated man, state labeling costs money and it's certain that the burden of paying for the label will be passed on to local consumers. In a 2014 study conducted by Cornell University for the Northeast region, the impact per family household was $500 per year. We can safely assume it would be way more for Hawaii's families who are already challenged by expensive food bills. And in the end, it is all about choice. To mandate a state-specific, unsolicited labeling scheme across the board may actually result in less choices for local consumers, as nas national brands may balk at the unnecessary costs and pull out of Hawaii. It may also result in additional burden on local food manufacturers who may not have the ec economies of scale to make up for the added expenses. Since 2012, voters in four states have already rejected mandatory labeling laws and we should follow that wisdom. We are to send an ad committee to reject Senate Bill 131. Thank you for the opportunity to submit testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Lord Turbo. <laughs> Lauren's a lobbyist you, also. Members, uh, Lauren Turbo on behalf of Hawaii Food Industry Association. We represent about 200 food retailers, suppliers, distributors in the state of Hawaii. Uh, we're in opposition to this bill um, for a lot of reasons I've already, that have already been talked about, but mainly because um, it would really be impossible for the retailer to know whether or not the product is genetically modified. There's no test the retailer can do to confirm whether or not the product is genetically modified. If the product is mislabeled at the distributor level, the retailer could potentially be liable for misbranding, um, which really isn't fair to the retailer. Um, and then just from a practical standpoint, I went to a conference this year, um, which had all of the national, big national CEOs from the 
from, you know, very large companies that distribute food to Hawaii, you know, about 80, more than 80 percent of our food is imported. And they did mention that it would be extremely, it would be highly unlikely, wouldn't happen, that they would label specifically for Hawaii. So what that means is that we would have to take that on as our burden as the importer. So um, there's just no way that wouldn't result in an increase in cost that would be pretty tremendous. Um, and also one of the fears that could happen and what they're talking about doing with Vermont is just simply label that product not for sale in Vermont, not for sale in Hawaii. In which case, that could be a very, very serious problem uh, immediately, um, obviously, um, in terms of the amount of food that we need to bring into the state. So for those reasons, we're, we're opposed to this bill. Thank you very much. Cindy Goldstein. Committee chairs, vice chairs, and members of the committees, um, Dr. Cindy Goldstein testifying on behalf of DuPont Pioneer. Um, we feel that the federal regulatory system uh, is where the regulation of labeling belongs, that the science-based information and evidence and the weight of the body of the evidence overwhelmingly has shown these foods and food ingredients to be safe. Uh, we also understand the desire of consumers to have opportunities to understand what are the ingredients and composition of the foods that they're purchasing. I think uh, in this day and age, uh, when we go to the grocery store, to the farmer's market, to our local markets, we see a number of products that are labeled GMO-free, labels already being affixed. So for consumers that have an interest, they are able to find these in the marketplace there are a number of apps available for our mobile devices, which uh, many more people have. And you can, while you're shopping in a store, use your mobile device to look at whether certain products uh, might have ingredients that you choose not to have in your foods, including GE or GMO-free foods. And uh, we um, feel that organic foods are, are very available and labeled clearly so that consumers can distinguish. So we do understand the desire to have consumer choice and feel that there are a number of products in the marketplace that are labeled very clearly <coughs> for consumers to be able to make those choices. So thank you very much for the opportunity to give testimony today. Thank you. Renee Pinnell. that it's not science-based and that it may increase the cost of um, food choices for those of us here in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Vasilis uh, Samros, UH. She's not position. Alicia Malapidi. Um, I'm actually here representing the Biotechnology Industry Organization and International Trade Association doing biotechnology R&D in healthcare, energy, and food and ag. Uh, we're opposed to the bill, and you've got our testimony, so I will go into it. But I wanted, I always like to reference a couple of real life examples for, for those of us. So I do animal welfare work, and I have a lot of vegan and vegetarian friends, and they don't eat meat. Or if they eat meat, they want sort of the, you know, uh, free range kind of meat options. And so when we, we do go out or they do go shopping, they're appropriately labeled. For the foods that they want, they, it says uh, range, uh, free range chicken or free range meat. And we don't label all the other meat because it doesn't need to be labeled. They have very specific wants and desires for whatever reasons and they buy those foods. The same with kosher. If you want, and, and these are all processes, just like biotechnology. So if you want kosher foods, it's labeled kosher. And that, and if you don't need to label everything else kosher. And I think what we heard already is if you want GMO free, there's stores now. I know this great health food store on the Big Island. <laughs> you can buy these GMO free products in these stores nowadays. They're, they're great niche markets. I don't think you need to label all the other foods um, in the supermarket. 
um, let's make sure we have these niche markets for the people that want them. Thanks. Have a big global non-kosher bill next year. There you go. <laughs> for my people. My <laughs> 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 Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to take uh, the time to speak and give you our testimony regarding the bill um, SB131. My name is Michael Kamiya. I'm a third generation papaya farmer. We grow the Kamiya papayas grown out on the windward coast of Oahu. And uh, my dad, I'm slated to eventually take over the farm, so I'm excited. But at the same time, I'm very, I feel like there's a target on my back all the time. For one, we had a uh, what is it, a buffer zone bill that we testified against, and then now we have a GMO labeling. My problem, and I do stand on my testimony, but my problem with the GMO labeling is that I feel that it's targeting our papayas. 95% of the papayas in Hawaii are GMO because we need to be resistant to the ring spot virus. So, but when you start putting a label on something, it's almost like as if it's a label on a cigarette carton to me. And so it makes a consumer think, oh, I don't know if I want to buy this. And it hurts us, but already we tell our customers, and it's on our website, that we are GMO papayas and we're proud to be GMO. So my problem, again, is that it's making our products look like it's something dangerous when it's truly not. So again, I please humbly ask you to not let this bill go any forward and to please support us young farmers because, honestly, young farmers like me, when I tell them what we're going through, they all... A lot, one of them told me, you know what, why do we even bother? I feel like just quitting already. But I think we still have to fight and say our piece. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So Michael, just yes. um, sure. so I'm clear though, so you, you actually are labeling your products because you're putting them on your website. Um, well, we don't label the actual papayas because another label would actually cost quite a bit of money. We already placed a label, I don't know if you can see it. We, our little Camille papaya logo is on our papayas, but an additional label, and I've done some research where I've called the labeling company, and it's upwards of $4,000. So it's a lot of money, you think. And the additional placing of the label, we all, it's, we, we tried using machines, but they damaged the papaya. So we use, our workers all place all the stickers all in my hand. So they would put this sticker, and they'd put the additional sticker on top of that. Unless, of course, you incorporated the same sticker. True, very true. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's, but with, how would we incorporate with all that verbiage on it? It would be a really large sticker with that. It was 10 point font, I believe. Yeah, so that's why I thought of it. It almost looks like a cigarette label, you know, the, the Surgeon General warning. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate that you're not picking on us, but please support us. We're farmers. We grow the food that everyone eats. Well, not everybody, but. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> In opposition, uh, Hawaii Agriculture Partnerships, for ag. Okay. Uh, Robert Benz, Hawaii Sustainable Farms LLC, in support. Michelle M. Mora, Lamato Ranch Lands, opposition. Katie Jacoby, Wine Institute. Opposition, John Bickle, Americans for Democratic Action. And support, Paul Poister, Agrium. Agrium. Opposition, Alan Takamoto, Monsanto. We stand on our testimony opposition. I'm not picking on you either, Alan. Uh, Ronald uh, Weidenbach, Hawaiian Agricultural Agriculture and Aquaponics Association. In opposition, Pamela Tumpap. Maui Chamber, opposition, Lauren Rigo, Chase Against Biotech, for representative. We had in uh, support, of course, uh, Chris Manfredi. Good afternoon, chairs, members. Chris Manfredi, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, you have our written testimony. Uh, I just want to make three points. One, we, we know this has been talked about before, but we would encourage the uh, chair of the Ag Committee to potentially recuse himself from this matter. 
Second, we think this is a solution in search of a problem. And third, we don't know why such a panic when everyone can just buy organic. <laughs> and with that, I thank you. I think that's something to do with they don't know. So, uh, Lori Farrell. Uh, my, my thoughts are that um, after being elected by tens of thousands of individuals, um, everyone on this panel is uh, both equipped and expected to weigh in on the best uh, health interest of the people of Hawaii. So. I can't imagine a person I would trust more than my co-chair in this bill, certainly more than anybody I heard testify to this point. Thank you for your comments, Chris. I'm just curious whether he also thinks it's appropriate that any legislator who receives a donation from a political action committee that advocates on a certain position should also recuse themselves. Yes, that's good. David Schell. Island Princess in opposition. I like to call it Peter Jam Card. <clears throat> Senators, uh, I'm just an in concerned individual. Um, my name is Peter Jam Card. I'm a licensed professional engineer. Uh, licensed in the state of White for structural engineering, but I, I have an undergraduate in environmental engineering. And a, and a master's of structural. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I think it's important for me to have a right to know. The first thing is I'm a fundamentalist Christian. And the Bible is very specific about this. In Deuteronomy 15.9, it talks about do not plant two kinds of seed in your vineyard. It defiles the planet. So the Bible is, and it also talks about in Leviticus 19.19, 19, keep my decrees, do not meet different kinds of animals, do not plant the field, fields with two kinds of seed. Now granted, you know, some people think that the Bible is a fairy tale. I particularly do not. And that's my first thing. My First Amendment rights give me the right to have freedom of religion, and to me, genetically modifying plants files the plants, I should be able to have the choice not to eat them. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, only one time in my life was I ever required to have surgery. <coughs> and for about 10 years, I suffered from bloated belly. And I ran four miles a day, and I ate right, and I exercised every day. And finally, I had to have umbilical surgery when my umbilical cord herniated. And my surgeon, who asked to remain anonymous, said, have you ever heard about gluten? And uh, <clears throat> so I did some further investigation on that, and I eliminated eating any type of uh, high gluten flour, and I eat only organic uh, wheat products now every day, and my stomach bloating stopped. I still required the surgery. It was not kosher GMO foods that did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, organics, there's a difference between a GMO just the GMO food, perhaps, is your best Well, what it means. Oh, wheat is a, not a GMO. It's a GE. It's a hybrid. Um, BT corn, I, I can't eat out at a Mexican restaurant anymore because when I eat the chips made from BT corn, they taste like mentholatum to me, and it gives me an upset stomach. But I can go home and eat the chips that I buy at Costco, which say they're organic, and I, and I don't get sick from that. I'd like to know if there's BT corn, and BT is a pesticide that you cannot remove from the food. And you know, there, there was comments earlier about testing, and as far as if I eliminate all the testing that's been funded by industry in the United States, and look at the remaining testimony, because obviously it's in their best interest to, to come up with uh, outcomes that are in favor of them. As far as I can find, there are no feed testing of any of these products that, that came out favorable for people. This is the most important issue of our time. We can't afford to get this wrong. 
if, if this food is not healthy for us, if it does cause all these problems like it's mentioned in, in you know, brain brain or weak belly, it causes dementia or all these other types of things, you know, we could have an epidemic number, hundreds of millions of people getting sick. So, you know, and then of course my last comment is, you know, the person who's in charge of, you know, the DEA, I mean, uh, not the DEA, but the FDA, um, Michael Taylor was a former vice president of Monsanto, which kind of to me is like a fox in charge of the, the hen house. And, you know, <clears throat> it's falling to the states to make this type of decision. And, and I would just encourage all of you to give us the right to know because we have a right to know. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Jim Carr. We appreciate the comments. Uh, clarification Is David Shell here from Island Princess? Um, next, I'm going to move into um, individual testimony. We, uh, my staff was, uh, it's a very good job. They were good enough to um, compile these testimonies earlier today and last night. Um, at last count, we had um, 516 testimonies uh, before the later testimony came in. And as by way of breakdown, 407 individuals testified in support, 103 individuals testified in opposition. Six individuals offered comments only. I'm going to begin to read these names, and if you're here, uh, we'd love to have some additional input from you if you would like to uh, share. We'll have Nancy Redfeather in support, Springer K in support. Stop me if you are here. Uh, Marsha Kimura in support, Chris Kobayashi in support, Deb Creek in support, Julian Nimoto in support, Susan Vickery. In support, as with Brian Lehman, in support. Karen Fujimoto, in opposition. Lorraine Zane, in support. Sharon Cushman, in support. And Francis Fujimoto, in opposition. Felicia Calvin, in support. Followed by Sun Geiger, making comments. Ann Evans, in support. Followed by Tulsi, in support. You know that. <laughs> Alicia Rays, in support. Sharon Williford in support. Ann Strong provided supportive testimony. Meredith Murphy in support. We then had Bill Quinlan in support and Dennis Yamaguchi in opposition. David Makai Ma providing comments and Roxanne Dubiel in support. Dario Bernacci in opposition and Misuko Hayakawa in support. Brian Emmons support, Valerie Lowe in support, Cynthia in support, Dean Sensui in opposition, Shannon Rudolph in support, then Brad Parsons in support. A woman named Cheryl was in support, and Matthew Ross in opposition. Lucia Yu in support, Faye Wallace in support, Faye Pacheco in support, and Catherine uh, Pomeroy in support. David Orr in support, Robert, I'm sorry, Robin Midkiff comments, May yes. not would you like to come up? Sure. Thank you. Uh, I actually enclosed the Sarah Leamy study in my testimony, yes. which was done by Professor Gio Eric Sarah Leamy. In, uh, he did it in France after looking at a Monsanto study where they fed the rats for 90 days. One group got genetically modified maize or corn. One group got genetically modified maize uh, sprayed with Roundup, and the third group got organic maize. He looked at that study and saw that there were signs of liver and kidney toxicity in the rats in groups one and two, and decided to do his own study. Um, I met John Swift. I'm on the Avenue Family Foundation, excuse me. I'm just, but I'm speaking as an individual. We give away about five million a year in the state. Um, but I met John Swift, who's on the Board of Conservation International. He helped to fund this Sarah Lindy study. He has his own foundation. Professor Sarah Lindy was actually shocked when he found that rats who were eating um, in groups one and two, got started to get big tumors in <coughs> seven months. I think about 75% of the rats in the study in groups one and two 
got tumors. And if you look at your testimony, you can see the pictures of the rats. It's pretty horrific. Um, so then he got this published. He got it peer reviewed. It was published in the European Journal of Food and Chemical Toxicology. And when it was published in 2012, the questions started. And um, Monsanto could not get it pulled until they got somebody onto the board of the French company El Sevier, which owned the Journal of Food and Chemical Toxicology. Um, they got it, they, but that peer review said the scientific methods are sound, there's no fraud involved, and what? The conclusions are inconclusive. Now, I, I don't know what's inconclusive about these rats, but um, in any event, the study has now been peer reviewed for a third time, republished in Europe, um, and it stands. And there's not just a big problem, I think, with the genetically modified food, which is what this labeling is about, but also with Roundup. And I believe. Um, the Australian scientists have come up with a thing that the glyphosate in the Roundup persists in the ocean water. And they believe that's contributing to the destruction of the Great Barrier Reef. And if you look at our coral, and you look at the big displays of Roundup, which are in Costco and Home Depot every spring, um, I think we know why. It's not just the warming of the ocean. But anyway, I'm not, I, I digress on this point. Uh, I think it's, it's true what the gentleman said earlier. Uh, there have been very few feeding studies. Monsanto will only do them, has only done this one for 90 days, because they know what happens. I think people deserve to know what's in their food. And I don't think we, with our uh, system of private insurers, this state, with HMSA and HMAA can actually afford to look at long term what's going to happen to our people, particularly when you look at the amount of soy that's eaten in this state when 93% of the soy is genetically modified. So thank you very much for allowing me to testify. Peter, would it be safe to say from the Department of Health's perspective that the only thing worse than watching rats running around the Hawaii restaurants is Rats running around with liver tumors. Why <laughs> restaurant? I don't want to see that. Okay. <laughs> we we'll go to May Nakahata. In opposition, Eileen Ye. In opposition, Jimmy Gomes. Opposition, Makoto Lane. In support, Briss Craven. In opposition, and Heather Whiteside, Whitehead. In support, Cherub Silverstein. Support, Peggy McArdle. Support. Isuko Hayakawa in support, Marty Barrett in support, Carol Brock in support, Barry Sato in support, Jonathan Boyne in support, Michelle McKay in support, Chris Renlund in support, Aleph Beal in support, Adolf Helm in opposition, Maureen Langberg in support, Kanahele Montezor in opposition, Teresa Mato Lindsay in support, Mary Lack support, Troy Abraham in support. Oh. There's no hurry. You're good. <coughs> Troy? Uh, no. Mary. Uh, yeah. okay, good. Um, Aloha, uh, committee chair, vice chair Riviere, and members of the committee. My name is Mary Lax, and I live in Holly Eva, and I am testifying in Stonks Park, Senate Bill 139. Um, and out of respect for your heavy schedule this afternoon, I'd like to limit my uh, comments uh, to just a couple. Um, I support this, the passage of this bill per, um, because I agree with the vast majority of Hawaii residents who for several years now have been asking for labeling legislation. Um, labeling efforts in Hawaii have been supported on all level, levels of government, from our neighborhood boards to all of our county councils and to our uh, federal representatives in Washington. And those of us submitting testimony in support of Senate Bill 131 are also standing with the majority of Americans who believe that we have that right. 
All of the major national polls across the country show that over 90% of Americans support labeling of these transgenic novel products. Six days ago, the U.S. Department of Agriculture approved a genetically engineered apple. It's been genetically engineered to resist browning when sliced. The domestic apple industry is opposed to the commercialization of these apples. Several food companies have already said that they would not sell them. And in 2013, both Gerber and even McDonald's said they would not use these genetically engineered apples in their product. There are many, many concerns about this specific, this one genetically engineered product. Um, and I think that we deserve to know if we are eating a product that might look fresh, but is potentially not a fresh, not a fresh project, uh, pro product. I think that labeling legislation does not argue whether the GE industry is good or bad. It simply argues for the right to choose and I think that right to choose is a core value of a, of a healthy and democratic society. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. I then called Troy Abraham, followed by Joni Mar uh, Marie Child, in support Caroline Weber, in support Jesse Eben, in opposition Steve Grimes, in support. Show of hands for a couple individuals who are here to testify in person. Oh. Well, let me just start with the front row. I'm a, some of get you people rather than just things. So come on. And you can't say your name. I may read it again later, in which case this will be good. Uh, my, uh, my buddy over here is a battle buddy. Uh, I've known him since we were uh, in Iraq together. Uh, we both served in the military in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, what a lot of people don't know over there is part of our invasion included bringing seeds from our biotech industry. There was a $250 million deal that involved bringing agricultural seeds from most of these chemical companies over there. They burned their seeds and they've destroyed them in multiple places around the planet, not just on our island. And uh, we're totally in favor of that. Uh, these guys are all pretty much assholes all around the world. They uh, have basically made us murder and kill people. I have killed people in Afghanistan in the name of these bastards. And believe it or not, they should not be on our island. There is no doubt that they are poisoning us. That bill that just got kicked out of HB out of the house there, that's bullshit. <laughs> How can you not protect our people? I've been babysitting our bill from Hawaii Island for two years now to bring GMOs out of Hawaii Island and not bring any more in here. And I will not stand alone, and I will not stand by myself. We have people on every island. We have Dustin Barco. We have Babes Against Biotech. And we have an entire international coalition that hates these guys. And if you guys fail us one more time, because apparently we don't have to vote the way the constituents want. I don't care how much money is thrown around. You guys get to make the decision here. So if you don't stand up for us, we're going to take this into our own hands. We will class action lawsuit the state, the federal government, or the county, whichever we have to do this. And I'm tired of bringing this up over and over again because everyone is scared of these companies. They have $500 billion, if not more than that, around the world. They have private security contractors, right. and I have knowledge of the insider trading of some of these people. And I'm not going to bring any more of that up, but I'm going to say this is entirely up to you all to stop listening to these corporations that put money into our pockets and into your pockets, whoever you are, name, Bags Against Biotech has named plenty of people that have taken money. CTAR has taken over $100,000 in the past two years from biotech corporations. There is corruption and there is scandal everywhere and our universities are bought and paid off. If we want to really know what's in our food, there should be no debate about it. I've had over 15 countries visit my eco-hostel, a 16-acre culture a permaculture facility that is based on Hawaiian traditions, on permaculture, on biodiversity, and a community spirit of aloha and power to the people. And we have seen labeling in other countries. I have Australians that have showed me their labeling. All it is is a parenthesis on the ingredient list. It says corn GMO, end of parenthesis. That doesn't cost more money. We have at least four or five states that are trying to put GMO bills through on, on labeling. If they are also in this league, it is going to be a national thing. They may change their, art, their, their labeling or their articles of confederation or what do they have for their, their labeling laws. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is put a sticker on it. We should not be paying out of our personal pockets by private corporations that are jacking up the prices of our food already to get the non-GMO verified sticker. That costs that corporation money, which is paid on to the consumer anyways. Consumers are paying for all of this. It's about time that the corporations paid for it. So put these people in their place and pass this bill. The people are with you in this country and beyond. And I'm a Hawaiian sovereign citizen, and I am pissed off. Aloha Keakua, stand up for our people, and ban GMOs, and label them wherever they come from, from whatever country, whatever state, or whatever county.
Thank you. Thank you. Next individual on this side. You're in the front row. Come testify. What was the rabbit's name? Derek. Derek. Oh, okay. That's good, man. On the island of Hawaii, strong, strong support of this bill. Um, yes, we definitely have the right to know, and we do want to know, because ever since this whole GMO thing started coming up, definitely educating myself, my family as well, and just standing in the store and looking at these labels, I stand almost, I took about 10 minutes in a store looking for a cereal that was good for my son, and he keeps pulling out, what about this one, Dad? I'm like, hmm, that one's not so good for us. And so, I just believe that we do have that right to know, and if you want to eat the other foods, that's cool, but at least we have something that's labeled. And especially I support our local farmers because that's what we need to do. We have this beautiful state of Hawaii with prime land to grow our own food. Why are we importing so much stuff? Talking about money, this, money, that. Grow our own stuff. Let's take care of ourselves first. It's on our Hawaii state seal. The land is perpetuated to righteousness. So please help us. Thank you so much for your time and strong support of this bill. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you. Chair. My name is Mark Culpson. I work for Syngenta. We're in opposition of this. I'll stand on our testimony and uh, basically bring up uh, two items. It's one is that there's two bills in Congress, uh, federal level, that's moving through, uh, being heard as we speak. Um, also, there was uh, another recent poll where uh, I think 70 plus percent of uh, the people who responded to the poll said we should label DNA. Yeah. Yeah. That we should label DNA. Yeah. And, uh, that's yeah. Sir, Take a break for your yeah. 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 Sir, I don't want to talk to you, dude. I'm not your friend. I'm here to see the justice is served. I'm in a county and state building. I've done nothing wrong. Do not bother me right now. I'm here to see that justice is served. I will call my lawyer if you continue to bother me. I will not step outside if I'm not under arrest, sir. I'm in a public place that is available for the government and people of Hawaii. I'm a Hawaiian sovereign citizen. Please allow me to continue the proceedings. I'm not doing anything wrong. I've broken no laws, and I would like to behave in front of these people that are my constituency. Thank you. I appreciate your understanding. Um, next, I was going to take someone from this side. You come back, okay? The lady in the right, right over there. Bring your hair. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair. My name is Summer Star. And I'd like to speak really briefly on the, um, I stand on my testimony in support, really briefly to the market perspective in defense of small farmers. Um, as a member of the Maui County Farm Bureau, Hawaii Farmers Union, and former secretary of the Hawaii Organic Farmers Association, which is a certification agency, it became very clear to me, and continues to be clear to me, how difficult it can be for organic farmers to get certification because often they're small operations, and frankly, certification operations uh, and procedures are extensive. And so a measure like this um, allows for those organic farmers who can't afford certification, right? Because the argument is that if somebody wants to buy organic, they'll buy something labeled organic. And they can't unless they're certified. And it's economically restrictive for a lot of local small, small farmers to be certified. So if other foods are labeled GMO, then the consumer has the option to purchase those things from farms that aren't able to afford it. And with all due respect to the idea of utilizing technology, I believe it's a little bit economically discriminatory to presume that all customers can have a smartphone, download an app, and have the time to check every single product. And often, from my experience, because I've done the research, those apps aren't entirely um, comprehensive either. So I think that it would be really beneficial for small, local, particularly organic agriculture, to have a, a labeling of GMO and protect the consumer's right to choose. Thank you. Uh, 
Aloha. Thank you for your time. My name is Margie Maupin. I'm speaking on my own behalf, not re representing my place of work. I am a primary care provider in Waimea on Kauai. Labeling of foods from a medical, health, and even legal standpoint is a no-brainer. It's called allergies. A-L-L-E-R-G-I-E-S. For instance, you mix a gene protein from a cold water salmon with a cucumber to, the, the, to grow cucumbers in cold weather. Then, for instance, for the first time, a child has an anaphylactic reaction, which is common, which commonly means death, to cucumbers. This child has never shown an allergy to cucumbers before. I have treated people with anaphylaxis. I have seen people die, patients die with anaphylaxis. I have held my grandson as his throat was closing off from an anaphylactic reaction to who knows what. This bill really shouldn't be required support or defending it. This is a medical issue. I took an oath to cause no harm, to do no harm. I cannot, with all conscience, do no harm. If I don't know or cannot completely counsel a patient about the importance of avoiding allergies or death from anaphylaxis. If you ask anyone who is trained medically, and they still have some, a few marbles, I would be very surprised if, if they had an opinion that is not the same as mine regarding labels and allergies and anaphylaxis. I support HB 131 as the only option that is medically and even legally sound. Let's stop talking about money and start talking about health and safety. Thank you for the opportunity so much for your time and hard work. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, I had someone in the back there right now. My, my apologies. Okay, we're going to get to everybody. Good afternoon, Senators. <clears throat> My name is Lynn Wilson, and I have submitted testimony, so I stand on that. I just wanted to point out that Vermont, Maine, <clears throat> and Connecticut have all passed labor bills. And I haven't heard that their agricultural economy is, you know, in a mess because of that. And I just want to point that out, that, you know, this is happening. Hawaii can play a leadership role in this. Thank you. I'll read a few names and then call some more people. Courtney Brooks uh, in support. Eloise uh, Ana Ana in support. Alita Redman in support. Sandra Fujita in support. Chelsea in support. Robin Hammersquith in opposition. Richard Tilton in support. Mark Sotomayor in opposition. Peter Hodgson comments. Richard Sin uh, Snitzler in opposition. Selena Kensana. Opposition, Elizabeth Keller in support, Kim Simpson in support, Lois Oppenheimer in support, Deanne Dominic in support, Paulina Navalis in support, Marissa Howden in support, Margaret Schechter in support, Joe Ritter in support, Carmen Kanana again in support, Joe and Lisa Bollinger in support, Clyde Fukuyama in opposition, Keone Gusman opposition, Shelly Muneako in support, Brendan Fisher in support, Gail Loughborough in support, David Balfour in support, Marie Tor Torrio in support, Eve Powers in support, Richard Minder in support, Lady Santiago in opposition, Xiaotang Chang in opposition, Tamir Wright in support, Denise Kaufman in support, Darshkin Baikoy in opposition, Alan Cremate in support, Ariel Blair in support, Tanya Lizama in support, Liz Ahana in support, Arlette Quintero in support, Sherry uh, Siri and Amy Birch in support, Kakina De Silva in support, Kurt Oishi in opposition, David Contreras in support, Lynn uh, Zelensky in support, Bud and Katie Gibson in opposition, Fidel Jeweler Ball in opposition, David Deleuze in opposition, Jason Mataoshi in opposition, Pamela in Fukuoka in opposition, and Chad Mondoy in opposition. Go back to some people who are here today. Go in the back. 
you'll be next, okay, Uncle? Sorry. Aloha, Senators. Nomi Carmona with Bates Against Biotech. Um, thank you for taking the time to hear GMO labeling today. We've been coming for three years to <coughs> ask for more transparency on this issue. And just to touch on a couple of really quick points, you know, 74% of our residents agree on GMO labeling, and three out of four of our counties have passed uh, GMO labeling measures urging the state two years in a row. So I think that's certainly a voice from the neighbor islands. Um, just real quick in response to the pesticide companies' claims that they're highly regulated, the USDA and the FDA actually don't do any independent testing of GMO foods. They just rely on the studies submitted by the GMO patent holder seeking commercial production. So I think that's um, something to think about also in consideration that there are severe restrictions or prohibitions in 32 countries. Um, and though the GMO food industry would claim that the cost would be high or increase the cost of food, Yoko Kobayashi did an excellent analysis of implementations in five locations and found that the average cost per family per year, uh, per year was less than $5. So I think that's um, very reasonable considering uh, we have a right to know what's in our food. And so we just want transparency. And it's a, the bare minimum right that we should know which foods have been genetically engineered by the world's largest pesticide manufacturers for chemical resistance. Thank you. We support this bill. Thank you again for letting me speak. I'm here as a Kanaka. You know, I'm not a Hawaiian. I'm not an American. I choose to be who I am on this land. If you're from this land, then you know what I'm talking about. We are special people. I already testified earlier at the, the other meeting we had downstairs. You know, we're not just regular people. We are different. We are different people. We are people that survived. We did all of this. All that you guys talking about now, we started it. Your people came here to learn what we, how we grew in our lava fields, in the lava, how the potatoes grow. And they went home and said, we did it. We didn't come to Hawaii to learn. We taught them in Hawaii how to grow these food. Our fish ponds, all the islands, very unique. We know about taking care of our people. You guys know that. We ran around naked. Excellent health till you guys came along. You know, I say you guys because you are the people today this wonderful flag that you support there, and that one that gives me that flag, gives me independence from all of you. That's who I am. I am Kanaka. This is my land. You are all visitors, every one of you, unless you can claim Kanaka, or you are subject of us. And we thank you, subjects, Honest Americans, we understand, we know, you learn from us what was started. What started this was really good for the few that came together and said, let's do this. Let's do this. We can make plenty of money. We can take all the seeds of the world and make money. Let's just bring it out. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. And you did. You did it. And one guy stepped up and said, you know what? This is not right. This is not right. And today, because of that one guy, we learning the truth. The truth is out there today. We are special here in Hawaii. We so gifted. Kauai. Oh, you guys came from Kauai. You know what I'm saying. The outer islands all voted, and you turned it down, right? 
the government, the state, didn't turn on the people's vote in Maui, on the Big Island, on Kauai. We already voted. We don't want GMO on the Big Island, right? Voted and turned down. Maui, same thing. Turned down. Kauai, first one. Turned down. I was labeling them. You know? Because some people got together and said, we can make a lot of money. And then one person came out and said, you know what? This is not right. And in Hawaii, we have lived a lie for a hundred years and more. You guys know that. This is not a state. We are not a state here. Show me. Show me <coughs> that I am a state. Where is the proof? So I come to your meetings all the time. I'm a kamaka. I know what's going on. I know the world. I know what's the situation in the world. It's sick. And we all sick because of it. Go back and tell them. You get the rest of the world to play. Don't come in Hawaii. Don't come to Hawaii. No more. We don't need it. If we went the other way today, all the problems would be solved. We'd be healed. We'd be doing the right things instead of the wrong things. We need to be that people. We need to be that people today. You can stand up for us here. This has brought us together. All This has brought the whole world together. Right. We all at your mercy. For me, you, you, it's the human race has ended. You took the seed, God's seed, and destroyed him. Now you can make man out of a test tube. Good luck to you. It's my children that I care about. You guys like him more? <laughs> you want to hear more? I just need you to tell us what you, what you feel about this bill, frankly. You tell me what I feel about this bill. I, tell me how I feel about this bill. I, I, I think you and I are at the same position, sir. But I do appreciate your testimony. It's not just you and me, my brother. It's everyone behind me I like and it. around the world. Keep it in the world, but not in Hawaii. No more in Hawaii. We need to be in the truth. We need to be in the light. And the light has come to Hawaii. The light is in Hawaii. On Kauai right now. Speaking for the people. A Tui nation rising. A Tui nation. Polynesian kingdom of Atui. The light of God, Atui, the light of God, Atui, the light of God. He made us. He can fix everything. It took seven days, and he rested on the seventh day. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Jerry Mack. Lisa McDaniel in support, Jeffrey Klein in support, Jeffrey Knowles in support, Patty Gwai in opposition, Bobby Bess in support, Mark Sheehan in support, Kihei Silva in support, <coughs> Susan Wendell in support, Carol Newell in support, Irma Lee Malley in support, Corey Jones in opposition, Valerie Lassick in support, Trudy Elkins in support, Sally Hope in support, Jim Albertini in support, Roger Necker in support, Liz Cannon in support, Stuart Nichols in opposition, Harry Bittenbender in opposition, Michaela Dozier in opposition, Deborah Pipegrass in support, is. Carlton York in support, Don Pipegrass in support, Leslie Jones Cindy in support, Goldstein Cynthia Harbour in support, the Teresa Plum in support, Gerard Freer in opposition, Delbert Howie Crop Improvement Association, Former PRP Lobbyist, Andrew Carlson in support, Marin Donahue in opposition, 
Randy Cabral in opposition, Juan Wilson in support, Daniel Foreman in support, and Sharon Leeton in support, Diana Montgomery Brock in opposition, Ariel Kima in support, Maureen McLaughlin in support, Natalie McKinney in support, Donna Mitz in support, Malia Chun in support. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha, my kako. Aloha. Aloha, Senators. Mahalo me for your time. Okay. Uh, my name is Malia Chan, and I'm in support of Senate Bill 131. I'm here not as an industry person, someone who is paid to be here. I'm here as a mother, taking time off of work, um, because I feel that my kuleana as a mother is to provide my children with nurturing food that helps to sustain healthy children. I believe it is my basic human right as a person, as a mother, and as a consumer to know exactly what I am purchasing, consuming, and feeding my children. It is appalling that in this nation that prides itself in technological advancements, human rights, and education, that its citizens need to lobby and fight for such a simple human right of disclosure and labeling of food items. As I was listening and paying attention to everyone's testimony, the industry people that came up here, the bottom line was money. Yeah. And my, my question is, is if your paid scientists have proven that GE or genetically modified foods are so safe for human consumption, what do you have to hide? Label it. If you have nothing to hide, label it. For all the mothers, fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers, practitioners, nurse practitioners that came up here, their number one concern was health and wellness and disclosure, knowing what they're consuming, knowing what they're purchasing as a consumer. So please protect our right to know what we are purchasing as a consumer, and please vote in support of Senate Bill 131. Mahalo Nui. Thank you. Gentlemen. Dave. Good afternoon. Aloha. My name is Dave Gonzalez. I am speaking on behalf of uh, the Occupy Honolulu. Uh, if I'm one of those nutty activists uh, on the corner, I'll accept that. Uh, please uh, uh, pass this bill. You don't. You're. You know. We've been back and forth now, and we're having bills deferred and disappeared and messed with and. You know, why don't you guys just give us back the initiative and then we'll write our own laws and then we'll vote them in, you know. So please, you know, pass this bill. Let's get this late. Let's join those other states. And I agree with the woman that said, uh, last day check, they didn't destroy those states. Okay, and if, you, if enough states adopt these labeling initiatives, uh, then we can proceed to have a national law that labels GMO, and uh, I agree, it's appalling here in the United States that we cannot know what is in our food, and that's one corporation or a few corporations, handful of corporations, I don't care who it is, I resent them coming here, spending money, millions of dollars, lying to the people to get their way. Now, you, you know, we're not going to go away, we're going to be on that corner still, and we're going to still be in the streets, and we're still going to come here, because, you, you know, we're, we're just having these bills disappeared and messed with, and this is not democracy, you know. We come here expecting you you guys do all the work for us. You represent us, not these corporations. So please, pass this bill, label, you know, let's be, let's Hawaii be in the forefront of this, you know, this great movement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gentleman in the back. Uh, senators. Um, I'm a Farm Bureau member and a uh, farm, Farmers Union member, organic farmer on Kauai. Um, Warren Pang gave a talk once and it really stuck in my mind. He was talking about GMO foods and how science, scientists or the publications or the, the media uh, make a supposition that Oh, there's been trillions of meals of GMO foods eaten, and nobody's come to harm. 
Well, if you're talking science, you have control. And there's no control in that statement there. But uh, I'm, I'm here to make everybody aware of the work of uh, Judy Carman, an Australian researcher, C-A-R-M-E-N, I think it is. And she was the first one to do a study on pigs, farrowing pigs, pigs that would leave, live their full lives giving babies to pigs. Uh, especially because pigs have the, the uh, closest gastrointestinal tract to humans than all other test animals. And, uh, you know, we don't test on animals the same way, on um, humans the same way as we do on animals. So, uh, And what she found was feeding a diet of GMO corn and soybeans, which is the typical ration in the Midwest of both products, that uh, on, on slaughtering after the pigs had their piglets, etc., um, that they had uh, the GMO-fed pigs had signs of gastrointestinal inflammation and enlarged ovaries. And in this day and age, that was the first test ever done on the full, full, full life of the pig. <coughs> so when people say GMO foods are safe and they're uh, essentially the same, it's just a lie. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that, that lady, we're only going to be taking testimony if she supports them. That's all. Thank you. You really don't need to do that. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chair of the Committee. Uh, my name is Jan Pappas, and I'm from IAEA, Hawaii. And I'm a mother. I'm just uh, representing myself. But um, last fall, um, a friend of mine, who's from Hanakawa, is also supporting this bill. And I came out to your offices and um, handed out a full packet about um, GMOs, saying, uh, you know, GMOs the case for precaution. And it had to do a lot with the precautionary principle that we use in Europe to say, you know, we may not know all the science uh, that's going on, but um, if we feel, that, you know, that if we have seen enough evidence that there is harm, possible harm, then we can take action, you know, before all of the science is in. Science sometimes lags, is, is the understanding that I have, that uh, it's not always at the forefront. It actually follows what anecdotally is, is found. So um, I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, also, the fact that science evolves um, and public policy evolves, um, I think we have to take into account because, um, you know, if you take the atomic bomb, I think, you know, we, we got to that point where we could create it. Uh, but do we use that power now? No, we don't. You know, um, we're trying to have um, disarmament. Um, we used to uh, squelch every forest fire that happened because the science at one time said, you know, stop the forest fires, otherwise our, um, our forests are going to die. Now we've learned that controlled burns are where we go. Okay, science evolves. We don't always just come to the, the right answer right away. And I think right now, G genetic engineering is, a, is in its infancy. It's been 20 years. That, well, that's not even a generation yet to say what might happen uh, with uh, our guts, <laughs> what's happening with the bacteria in our guts when it's exposed to pesticides that are put into the corn. Um, because our, our, the bacteria in our gut is not human. It's bacteria. So um, those kinds of things. All, all of this tells me we have a right to know right now if we, if, whether or not we are eating this type of food. And I, I just feel, you know, we've all been here <laughs> several years now no trying to say this. Thank you. Um, I think one of the things that we, have, we feel is a total lack of trust in our regulatory agencies because we have seen that they haven't listened to the people but they seem to listen to the companies. And I, I just feel that, um, you know, uh, I would love for it to be federally labeled uh, so that it was easy for everyone in the country. But that is 
not happening. Uh, people have said uh, that they've had the opportunity for the last 20 years to voluntarily label. The companies don't want to do that. I think then at this, we have to act at the state or the lower level to uh, have this happen. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This gentleman back there. Hello, uh, Senators. Thanks for seeing us today, and uh, appreciate your time. Sure. Um, I'm in strong support of this bill. What is your name? I'm sorry. My name is Saul Khan. Um, I'm a small-scale organic farmer from I don't know, Kauai. Um, I'm also part of the um, Kauai Farmer Union, and um, yeah, it just seems to me like um, there's not there's there's organics, and then there's GMOs. There's also the middle ground that no one really ever talks about. Um, it seems like people that grow organics happily put organics on their label. No one, none of the organic farmers, even though it's really it's more costly to grow organic, they still put organics there. They're proud of it. It's a sign of pride, and I think that it should be the same for GMOs. You know, right in parentheses, GMO and under the papaya label. It doesn't have to be two labels, like you're saying. It's one label, just right. GMO. You should be proud of it. There's also that middle ground. If you're not organic, you're not genetically modified. Okay, there you are. You're in conventional farmers group. We get it. It's not you know rocket science there. Um, I don't trust uh, GMOs. Um, I try to eat them as little as possible. I try to uh, not feed them to my kid at all. Um, because these companies that uh, make the GMO foods have a long history of death and destruction. It's really, simply put, they're not trustable companies. And um, I don't feel good eating their food. I don't feel good supporting them. And it's our right to make a choice. It's all about choice. So um, you know, hope you guys' hearts are in the right place. And thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Read a few more testimonies. Iris, then I'm going to call this lady, Iris Iwami. Opposition. Let me just finish this page. Benson Chan in support. Linda Barry in support. Karen Shishido in support. Luan Vick in support. Jane Taylor in support. Terry Steiger in support. James Hearman in support. Scott Keith in support. Yes, ma'am. Aloha. My name is Lorna Cummings Poi. I am from the island of Kauai. I am in support of Bill 131. I love science when used to benefit people in the right way. Uh, the United States gives chemical biotech companies a right to grow genetically modified food. However, I have a right to make intelligent choices in food for myself and my family and believe my choices should be labeled. Hawaii's people should not have to depend on a ship to bring their food in. I just heard an industry person say that she was proud that 80% of our food comes in on a boat. We're going through a strike soon maybe, you know, and um, many of us were on Hawaii when Iniki hit, and we didn't have a ship come in and bring us food. We did without, and we survived. My kupuna served 70, over 70,000 people out of one fish pond and the food that they grew off their land, and they survived. All of that was taken from them. So I'm here to please ask you to consider to vote for labeling DMO food. Thank you so much. Can I testify? <laughs> yeah, you want to do that? Sorry, let me uh, turn it around here. And, uh, wait, hang on a second. Well, you might yeah, have to, yeah, whatever. Aloha, my name is uh, H. Doug Matsuoka with the Hawaii uh, Gorilla Video Hui. I'm here to support uh, the bill. Um, I join in support with what people have said. I, don't, I won't uh, repeat what they've said, but I thought I'd bring up a few points that maybe elected officials uh, are probably aware of, but you know, maybe stating it uh, might help. And I've been uh, documenting the uh, GMO, anti-GMO movement uh, for a few years. And you know, I was there in Cunha back in a few years ago uh, at the first protest in front of uh, Monsanto's Gate. I didn't even know where Monsanto's Gate was at the time. I had to find out where it was. When they said protest in Monsanto, I was hoping it was at a downtown <laughs> office. You could cool out in some air conditioning. <laughs> this was in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the day, and there were a lot of people there. Uh, one of the points I want to bring up is that uh, the demographic of this group is very broad. On one end, you have uh, 
very rural Molokai hunters. And on the other end, you have very urbane white wine drinking vegetarians. Vegetarians and hunters. They don't, they don't agree on anything but, but on the GMO issue. They, they um, two is this, the movement's not going to go away. Um, the people that support this kind of legislation aren't doing it for themselves, they're not getting paid. They're doing it generally for their kids and future generations. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of moms in the demographic. Moms aren't going to give up. Um, also, moms are still the primary caretakers of the kids, which means that they can show up at hearings a lot of the time. And, of course, they do vote. Um, okay, this is Im important. Their, their new uh, technical uh, uh, developments in the aggregation and dissemination of data, as well as legislation like the open data kind of legislation that the uh, city and counties and the state of Hawaii passed uh, last, last year. And this makes it easy, this makes more daylight into the information stream. We know, for instance, in my little iPhone, I've got, uh, uh, for the last six years, every single campaign contribution made from anyone to anyone. It's, all, it's like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of records. It's enough to fit into that iPhone, and I, I've got it in there. Um, okay, I've heard people say, especially this session, that if if uh, Hawaii enacts some kind of anti-GMO uh, legislation, the pesticide corporations are, are going to make trouble. Because these pesticide corporations are among the largest entities on the face of the earth. Uh, we know they've got tons of loot to toss around. Uh, we can see that in the effort against the Maui Initiative uh, earlier, earlier last year. Um, so the question is, would they stoop down to filing something, filing some kind of lawsuit against the state of Hawaii? And, you know, these guys are suing the counties and spring poison on kids. Of course. Of course they're going to make trouble. You know, but we shouldn't be afraid of that. We shouldn't let fear inform our actions. Um, and lastly, the real point I want to make is that future generations will honor the people that made these laws to protect them, just as we honor those that passed the uh, Civil Rights Law. The Civil Rights Acts of 1964 and 1968, that's within my lifetime. You know? And we honor these people that, that, took, that did that. And future generations will honor the people that kept coming out to these meetings that, that march through rain and through thunder and lightning, you know, to get these, get what it had had to be done and pass this kind of legislation. And future generations will also condemn those who didn't have the courage to pass it. And I just want to point that out without looking at anybody or accusing anyone. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Matoka. Um, we're going to review a few more names. Marion Hart. Turn this. Uh, Eric Shearer. Marion Hart was in support. Uh, Eric Shearer in opposition. G. King in support. Margaret Mansilla in support. Kia Kapahua in support. Lynn Azar in support. Thomas Tizard in support. Michael uh, Giori in support. Roy Shitnaka in support, Dan Azar, Dan Azar in support, Barbara Steinberg in support, Karen Kriedermeyer in support, Rhonda in opposition, Bill Medaly in support, Dana Allen in support, Irvin Bush in support, Virginia Bennett in support, Michael Stauber in support, Bonnie Newman in support, Darlene Rodriguez in support, Mark Phillipson in opposition, Karen Baxter in support, Carly Williams in support, James Kulololio in support, Robert Bentz in support, Keith Baxter in support, Susan Staten in support, Doug Gray in opposition, Blake Drolson in support, Carol Murray in support, Lawrence Lasua in opposition, Zoe Alexander in support, Janine Moore in support, Nale Kahakala in support, Blake Watson in support, Ellen Valois in support, Sylvia Barber in opposition, Susan Allison in support, Randall Chun in support, Nancy Ravello in support, Sarah Koneko in support, Miles Saputo in support, 
Barbara Matson in support, William Harris in support, Patricia Crandall in support, Cleola uh, Macomas in support, Mary Jo Masters in support, Sybil Erdman, Erdman in support, Doug Kirkpatrick in support, Helena Miguel, comments only, Alicia in opposition. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Okay, I'm going to um, kind of just stick to reading to my paper. <laughs> you don't need to. Okay. It's not it's stressful for you. <laughs> All right. I know. Thank you for this welcoming environment for us. Um, my name is Kayla Nakasone. I flew here from the island of Kauai in strong support of Senate Bill 131. Um, I've come as a mother simply because I want to know what I'm eating and what I'm feeding my children. Um, I feel like as a contributing member of Hawaii society, I have the right to know what I'm eating. Um, also, yes, everyone said organic products are more money, but as a parent, I'm willing to sacrifice other life's leisure to ensure the health and nutrition of my child. Nobody can put a cost on the health of your child. And to those who oppose the bill, they can say, buy certified organic food, avoid processed food, buy local produce, go fishing, pick your own OPDs. But that's not the point. The point is food awareness. And just with awareness, that was 600 people that chimed in online giving their testimony. We have over 1 million residents in Hawaii. That just goes to show you how aware the people of Hawaii are on this issue is that they are unaware, and that is all that we're asking. And it's not only the labeling, GMO is three letters, organic is seven letters. I go to Costco and I see the chicken, and right below it, it says organic. To add three simple letters onto a label shouldn't cost that much. And personally, personal testimony is all my life, you guys are right, show you chicken. You, I boil the water, and on the top of the water, I usually thought it was to boil out the fat. And a black foam substance would appear on the top of the water, and I would scrape it off and throw it away and then rinse my chicken, and then put in the shoyu and the, you know, the sugar and the garlic and the ginger. And then I bought organic chicken. That black foam substance didn't appear. And that is when I started my food awareness. What is this thing that I'm boiling out of my chicken that my mother taught me my whole life? That's how you make sure you chicken, Kayla. Okay. <laughs> that I thought that was a step in the process of how I'm supposed to cook and feed my family. That's completely changed. That whole process out of there is not there anymore. They say that GMO products are edible. So is toilet paper. You could eat clay. You could eat charcoal. But that doesn't mean that it's good for you. It doesn't. And you know, I am a mother, I am a primary care provider, I do work full-time, I'm online taking my master's full-time, and on top of that, I'm also having to research the products that I'm eating, and I feel that it would take out a big chunk of my time if when I went to the store, I didn't have to look for the word organic, but that I could also save time by avoiding the label of GMO. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sorry about this terrifying set. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Johnson, in support, get to people in there. Again, Elizabeth Regals, in support, Susan Douglas, in support, William Malady, in support, Miranda Camp, in support, Talak Takuda, in support, Bryn Foster, in support, Jerry Rose, in support, uh, Leahula Ewan, in support, uh, Lois Crozier, in support, Claudia uh, Herford, in support, Joel Goldfarb, in support, Mike uh, DeCasey, in support. Person back there? Come on. <laughs> Support of 131. What's your name, please? My name is Amy Stokes. I come from the island of Maui today. I took time off work. I'm executive assistant for Council Member Ellie Cochran. I'm also a mother. I have two children. Elijah's four. Naomi's seven months. They're both beautiful and healthy. Um, thank God. <clears throat> but um, I too, like everybody who has been testifying in support, believe that we have a right to know um, what's in our food. Very simple. Um, that's it. I just think it should be labeled. I 
try to avoid GMO products. I don't feed my children or my family GMO products as best I can. Um, it's impossible to tell if I'm doing a good job at that because it's not labeled. And I do pay extra for the organic label because at least I know that it's not in that. It would be nice to have another option. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dokes. Two more people, Rhonda Russell in opposition, Eugene Santiago in opposition, Melinda Wade in support, Javier Bicoy in opposition, Miranda Ritt in support, Greg Pontus in support, Stephen Grillo in support, Mary Mulholland in support, Derek Filk in opposition, Sandra Hurden in, op in support, Blaze Hilario in opposition, Mark Sakaha in support, Karen Shun in support, David Stolfus in, in opposition, Stacey Kennedy in support, Gene Porter in support, Please, Matthews, in support. As a testifier, ask him, please come up. Hi, uh, my name is Gina Hara from IAM. Um, I'm a second generation realtor. Um, I've never spoken before to testify for anything in person. Um, I missed the beginning because I had to work. Um, but I'm here because uh, my family has been doing real estate for a long time. And you know, recently, I not recently, in the past few years, I see a lot of autistic kids coming in, moms with autistic kids. And um, you know, red flag, what's going on? You know, because I every day I'm renting out a unit, I feel like uh, I have a pulse on what's going on, uh, where it's just a small, small time real estate. Um, we can see all around the island who's renting, how much they're making, uh, what's going on with the NSA. We can see a lot of things, you know, um, from the general public. And uh, recently, the uh, you know, past few years, we see moms coming in, and they go, oh, don't worry, he's the kid is putting the head on the ground, or whatever. And, oh, he's just autistic. And I'm like, when did autistic be like a normal, you know, state? She would mm -hmm. just say. Don't worry, he's autistic. Um, I'm like, okay, what are you feeding them? Always they are feeding like some kind of a um, baby formula that is um, soy and corn. It's not labeled. It's it's a it's a registered pesticide, GMO corn and soy, but it's used in 90% of the baby food. You know what I mean? That you buy from Walmart. They do not go and buy organic milk because that's the typical thing that you go and buy. You buy the formula. And so, as soon as the as my parents or somebody goes to um, to a regular school, they'll say, um, they'll say something like, okay, you can stop the milk, go to regular food, because your child is autistic or whatnot. So I have tenants like that who tell me about that, and then so then, you know, it goes on and on. So anyway, so my alert is up, is up. and you know, in real estate, um, our job, if we're representing a seller, is uh, the seller will generally not want to disclose, okay, because uh, disclose something because you know they're it's going to affect the the price of their home or something and but it is the seller's agent's responsibility to encourage disclosure because that's going to make a clean transaction it's going to you know um, that's just the nature of the seller's nature and so you know as the agent as the state or government agency as an agent for the general public they must encourage the sellers to disclose um, you know what I mean? Like even if it's something like a ghost, you know, people go, oh, a ghost is nothing to disclose about. But if the general public demands that they want to know disclosure about ghosts in Hawaii, it is a general practice that we must disclose if there are ghosts in the house. You know what I mean? Or if someone passed away, like certain, like you know, you can say that there's nothing, nothing to disclose about. But so it'll be in the, it's in the interest of. Do you ask that you stick to the? Um, oh, is that what it means? On GMO. Okay, so let's go to the GMO issue. So GMO, the way I look at it, is it's a structural issue. So when you have a structural issue about what you're selling, you need to disclose. Thank you. Thank you. John Wareheim in support. Julie McGovern in support. Barry Stratman in support. Harry Yoshida in support. Mark Joyner in support. Wayne Luzon in support. Maria Balangatan in opposition. Harvest Edmonds in support, Jeanette Chablow in support, Mary Philippe in support, Lauren Galindo in support, Carol Spencer in support, 
Richard Con uh, Conrad in support, Andrew McGarvey in support, Andrew Samuel in support, Wanda Ayo in support, Marion Orion in support, Richard Whale in support, Aver Mendez in support, Suzanne Westerly in support. Is there another testifier over here? Yes, ma'am. That's for Andrew McGarvey. Well, Mr. Thank you so much. I want to take a second to appreciate you because I really appreciate you hearing this bill. My name is Fern. I'm in Louie Rosenstiel. I came from Kauai today doing crowdsourcing to get people here really to pesticide bills in general. But I want to thank you so much for hearing this bill. We're in strong support. I represent thousands of supporters on Kauai and Ohana o Kauai um, that all would like to see food labeled. I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to stick to basically that. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We deserve the right to know. And thank you for listening to people, because in the hearing that we were in this morning, we were treated so disrespectfully. So many people flew over here, and they were given such a short amount of time. And the way that you listen to people um, is just so respectful. Mm -hmm. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Pass it up. <laughs> Jeffrey Heisel in support. Bonnie Marsh in support. Jerry DiPietro in support. Belinda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good afternoon, Senators. Uh, my name is Jerry DiPietro. I live on the island of Kauai. I'm in strong support of Senate Bill 131, and I also echo the, the sentiment. Thank you so much for your warm reception of our testimony. Um, as consumers, we hold the power of choice. The power of our economic choices are nearly as strong as our vote for elected representation. Consumers have the right to know if their food is produced with genetic engineering. GD foods have viral promoters and antibiotic resistant genes as part of the transgenic insertion. Um, 63 countries have labeling. The United States is nearly one of the only countries that does not. Um, labeling and complete bans are standard practice. This is not a radical request born in California. Um, <laughs> if a food like a transgenic corn is so unique that it is patentable, then it should technically have its own name. Um, its uniqueness uh, sets it aside from regular corn. Um, GE corn shouldn't even be called corn. Um, GE corn taints the perception of organic corn production. Uh, in the meantime, though, let's label it. We do um, deserve the right to choice. Um, consumers have the right to know. Uh, on Kauai, one of our problems with the GE papaya not being labeled. Um, in, in about 2005, we did uh, random samples of composites of, of papaya seed and found very little contamination of GM, uh, GE papaya on Kauai. But the problem is, is that they're coming in through the grocery stores. And the seeds, if you if you don't know whether it's rainbow or sunrise, um, and the seeds go into your compost, um, or a bird eats them off of the tree, you could um, we could start to have a problem. So labeling is very important. Um, we need to keep things sorted out. And thank you for hearing this bill. Thank you. We have Melinda Long in support, Nancy Levis in support, Alex Mungayan in opposition, Carolyn Griffith in support, Niesel, Niesen uh, Horner in opposition, <coughs> Stephanie Whalen in opposition, Beatrice Fujimoto in opposition, Callum Smith in support, Joy Wall in support, uh, Norma Akoili in, in opposition, Craig Threshy in support, Barbara Garifano in support, Joanne Bumatai in opposition, Sabrina White in opposition, Marissa Sperry in support, Gonzalez. Eliza Chang in opposition, Kelly Ball in support, Lydia Lowe in opposition, Susan Koaha in opposition, Moana Kiohalua in opposition, Christine Keog in support, Joni Kamiya in opposition, Ryan Keog in support, Andrew Dietrich in support, Danielle Baikoy in opposition, David uh, Makaidi in opposition, Iris Fishkoff in support, Joan Lasua in opposition. I have another testifier. Is there anyone else in the audience? Okay. I do need people to um, focus on new testimony uh, or stand on their testimony so that we uh, can get to deadlines for committee reports. Today is the five-week deadline. Mahalo. Thank you for letting me testify today. Um, 
I didn't get a chance to submit a written testimony, so I just wanted to come up. Uh, my name is Brian Belize, by the way. I'm a veteran, um, a farmer, and also uh, flew in today from Pune to, to give testimony. Um, I just wanted to, to state that I'm supportive uh, of the bill um, in support of labeling um, and furthermore um, you know, other measures against uh, GMOs on our island. my children and rendermen and esteemed members of this committee. My name is Juanita Mahi and, and a Brown Kawamoto, and I am here speaking as the chairperson of the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. We strongly support Senate Bill 131. I remember in 2012, the State Democratic Party of Hawaii, Oahu County Council of the Democratic Party of Hawaii, and the Environmental Caucus voted and passed our party resolution supporting GM labeling and the right to know for all the people of Hawaii. I remember in 2013 when the House unanimously, except for Rep. McDermott, passed the GM labeling bill. I remember people are the priority. Respectfully, I have been coming year after year. I see Ohana and friends and just want to say, Mahalo nui loa to all the senators, especially here today for allowing this bill to be heard. I can remember just a few years ago when this opportunity to testify was not possible and we had to petition the senators individually to have a chance to be heard. But because of the senators who sit here today before us, now our community can be heard. They can. So today is a very good day. Respectfully, you have made this all possible. So Environmental Caucus humbly accepts and asks for your support of Senate Bill 131. Mahalo nui Thank you. Thank you very much. Douglas Vincent. Gene Bross in support, Delphina uh, Rabara in opposition, Glenn Oyama, opposition, Isla Harmon in support, Lauren Clyde in support, Nathaniel Oswald and Maxine uh, Montague in opposition, Robert Powell in opposition, Kristen Bell in support, Mary McClung in support, Sam uh, Peter DeFries in the, support, um, Sam Tong in opposition. The industry people Mike must uh, seem to have left. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, Maxine Corpus in opposition, Ron. Bill Haha in opposition, Michael Bryan in, op in opposition, Lemoyne Radford in support, Bill Hatterman in opposition. Is there anyone else on this side who wish to testify? Please come on. Oh. No. Thank you. Um, for the record, my name is Tika Kuhonga. I feel like from Kauai, from Anahona Kauai. I'm in support of this bill. Um, a couple of reasons. I'm a single mom to four. Um, Kahiapo is nine, Lilino is seven, Makanano is five, and Nita is two. Um, I'm a single mom. Um, I work at one of the high schools on Kauai as a Hawaiian language teacher. Um, I have to ask for someone to substitute for me today so we could fly in this morning and be here. Um, I don't have money to throw around, so being here is, is a lot for me. Um, on top of that, I go to school, um, uh, and I advocate for anything to do with Kanaka Maoli, with us living off of this land. Um, I'm just a, a little bit frustrated listening to everything today. Um, you can Hopefully you guys can feel the air from everybody and um, call away for you feeling attacked. But being in this position, that's your Kuleana, you know, and us giving you what we feel is part of it. Um, but one of, one of the things that did bother me was one of the gentlemen saying, oh, um, you know, some, some things are labeled, and if it's not labeled, you know, you know the ingredients that's in it, and, you know, maybe you should find out what it is. And so I brought my water bottle because they said, oh, well, here's my water bottle, and I can tell you there's water in it. Or I could say, oh, 
Ai ke kahi mau i ole i loko ni, ai na keko i loko ni, ai he mau popoki i loko ni. They eat it like, right? And you're looking at me like, we'll speak English. I don't know what these English words are on these things that we are eating. I have no idea what these chemicals are and what these ingredients are. And yet I'm supposed to believe that they're healthy for me and my children. And um, I just told you there's rats and cats and dogs. <laughs> and <all> that <laughs> but please, that's, that's what I just told you. But because I just told you a language that you understood. Now if you told me, oh well, the, the things that are in here are made organically. They're grown from the aina. And we did not put anything else to um, you know, alter it. Okay, great, I got it. Oh, well, the things that are made in here are GM, GE, they, they were altered. and But you also have the choice to drink it or not. Okay, well, I decide not to, right? That is my choice. But I don't have that choice going into the mm. stores and looking at everything. And as a mom, I want to be able to have that choice. So I strongly support this bill. And mahalo for listening to all of us today. Mahalo. Um, we'll go to Ken Carlson, who's in support. Renee uh, Kester in opposition. Joe Sunderland in opposition, Jeff Camilla in opposition to Jeff McCurry in support, Joe Amsterdam in support, Evelyn McDermott in opposition, Jennifer Benby in support, Alan Kaplan in opposition, Tim Crutchfeld, comments only, A. Baker in support, Andrea Talon in opposition, John Norman in support, Melina Tucker in support, Sandra Bird in support, Billy Kala, Kamidi L.A. Vila in support. Jamie Domingo, support. Corey Goodman, support. Walter Ritt, support. Lisa Andrews, support. Sorry. Alan Sofio, support. support. Nancy Perlman, support. Leslie Larson and Penny Heifel, in support. Industry guys, are gone. Daniel Murphy, in support. Carter Gunderson, in support. Felipe Ramona, in support. Lori Nakamura Higa, in support. Director of Agriculture, Scott. Support Maris, uh, he's Cuba, against uh, Fred GMO. In support, Gail um, Jackson, he's against GMO regulation Rice, against this bill. Joanna Wheeler in support. Neil Haunga, uh, opposition. Astrid Watanabe in support. Patrick Geegan in support. Mark, yes, I'll just stand on my uh, strong uh, support of this bill and thank you all very much for seeing me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Marjorie Irway. In Senator Wakai uh, here. Michael Durkin. In support, Don Malube in support, Walter Kalaea in support, Joan Weber in support, Kalani Fukumoto in support, Elise Travis in support, Morning Star Peak in support, Rita Manderfeld in support, Harry Steerly in support. Is there anyone else on this side that had to uh, wish to testify today? Is there anyone else that I've missed yet? Yes, sir. Thank you guys very much for doing this bill today. I'll keep it short. My name is Dylan Hooser. I am testifying in support of this bill. Um, thank you guys very much. I think we really deserve the right to know what's in our food. It's simple as that. Um, whether you eat organic or GMO, whatever it is, just want the choice. It's pretty simple. Uh, thank you guys very much. Have a good afternoon. Well, thank you. Bye. A few more people. Uh, Ken Taylor in support, Ken Stover in support, Marlene Wagner in support, Diane McClure in opposition, Ulrike in, uh, Steinke in support. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Jackie Crowell. I'm um, taking the committee of written testimony, but I really appreciate you bringing this bill to the Senate and um, the full support of it. We need the labeling just to give ourselves transparency and And Matuau in support, Eileen um, Kekloyan in support, Maria Lariera in opposition, Carol Kayser in opposition, Cherub in support, Greg Sprout in support, Sarah Apana in support, Kathleen Lee in support, Suzanne Frey in support, Janine Dominique in support, Sandra Gray in support, Mavis, Ol Mavis Oliveira Medeiros in support, Angela Whitlatch in support, Janet Pappas in support. Is there anyone else over on this side that I haven't called yet? Anyone would like to testify? Come on.
be really brief. My name is Leona Thompson. I'm so sorry that I did not submit written testimony. I just wanted to say I um, strongly support this bill and I truly appreciate all of you for even hearing this and, and hopefully for supporting it and for all of your help with it. Thank you. Is there another gentleman in the back? Please. My name is Robert Freed. I'm speaking today as a private citizen. I've lived on the North Shore for the past 15 years. Um, really, to me, this comes down to a basic question, you know, especially to those in opposition. Are we people or are we cattle? You know, are we human beings with a basic fundamental right to know what we're putting in our body? Or are we cattle that are just supposed to eat what's put in front of us and no questions asked? And that's it. Good question. Yes. Robert Schmidt in support, Carolyn Delano in support, Shiloh Moon in opposition, Barry Sultanoff in support, Julie and Thomas Pasquale in support. Is there someone else on, the left, on my left hand side or the side that hadn't testified yet? We're going to come to questions soon in a moment. Is there anyone on my right hand side? Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, does anyone have any um, uh, concerns about me entering the rest of these names officially into the uh, roles? Uh, so that we can get to questions. Is there anyone in this room that has a concern about that? All names will be officially put in as testimony, and we have everyone's testimony as well. Members, any concerns about that? I would just comment I have another seven pages of testimony, and the general ratio, just to, for fairness, was four to one um, in support, um, one, 20% uh, against. Okay. Members, questions? Let me, call the, let me call the Department of Health up just for a quick question as you guys get ready. So, um, this is a question for DOH in general. So, you testified a little while ago that you had a concern about manpower and the responsibility of checking labels and whatnot and overseeing. But then it was stated that uh, why not place the responsibility on those who produce the foods in the industry? If that responsibility is placed on those who produce the foods in the industry, does the Department of Health have any? Uh, Opposition to this bill, to the labeling. Um, you know, I'm not sure. Again, the health department does not have opposition to the labeling of foods. That's, okay. We want to be very clear on that. We do not oppose genetic labeling of foods. What we do is oppose it. I'm a regulatory agency. Yes. So the day after you pass this bill, you got Fruit Loops on the shelf, and you got the non-GMO Fruit Loops on the shelf, or whatever it is. And then someone say, "This food, I know, it has GMO, and they're not labeling it properly." So now you're going to charge the Department of Health with trying to prove that case because it's a law. So the Department of Health now has to prove that this food does not contain GMO products. That's the problem. We don't have the ability to do that. So if you guys pass the law, that's fine, but nobody can enforce that. As soon as a discrepancy comes up where someone's claimed this food is and this food isn't properly Peter, would there not be mechanisms, though? So let's mm -hmm. say someone then, one of these um, young men or women, right. both who feed their, you know, we had a young man who's a dad and a young woman mm -hmm. who's a mom, and they both mentioned concerns about feeding their children yeah. genetically modified mm -hmm. foods that were not labeled, would they not have many other recourses to bring them up, sue, to challenge the veracity of the label or non-label? Why would it all be on Department of Health? Um, I guess because, and just correct me if I'm wrong, like, I'm not an attorney, but if you charge the Department of Health with enforcing the law, then obviously my attorney is going to say you're the one that has to do it. Who else in the state is going to enforce discrepancy? The situation that you pose, I have no problem with that. If there's a way to make industry enforce themselves, yeah, I'm all for that. Well, there, I mean, I think there are many examples. For instance, um, I, I'm not here to pick on DLNR, mm -hmm. um, but you know, there's a they've had a significant shortage. For instance, in on the Big Island, mm -hmm. or the Department of Land and Natural Resources shortage of enforcement officials on the Big Island. Yeah. A lot of crazy stuff goes on in the oceans that appears to be pretty untoward. Mm -hmm. It's still against the law. We yeah. do our best. We would like to have more regulators. We sometimes don't. Department of Ag. Some people are bringing crazy animals in right. Hawaii. Of right. course it's illegal. Mm -hmm. We don't want to suggest suddenly it be okay. Right. Yes, we do our best. There are limited resources. Should we not at least put the burden of responsibility, in this case, on transparency and um, truth in labeling? Oh, the legislature, the legislature, Senate sees fit to do that. I mean, again, we have no problem with that at all. I guess we just don't want the public to be upset if the Department of Health says, I can't tell the difference between this and that. That's all that we say. Okay. 
members of the budget for department. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. I do have a question. Please. Um, Mr. Uh, representative for the, the food industry, is uh, she still here? I have some questions about the packaging and the labeling. Is there a, no, no, no. No industry guys here. I think they ditched. There's something on the record on detecting GMOs as a farmer that we use with the markers that are in the DNA. Only asking questions. How about um, uh, Mr. Camilla, who's here from Papaya? And how about the Department of Agriculture? Quick question, maybe. <laughs> It's just, uh, I was thinking about, um, there was some testimony earlier about, um, you know, if it's just fresh fruit and it, it's fresh food and it's grown here. Um, I'm not sure, but of papaya generally, we have a lot of GE papaya. Are you, do we have much genetically engineered fresh foods, tomatoes or cucumbers or uh, any other veg crops? Are we in, in the state, do you know? No, we do not. We don't. So generally, if it's locally grown, it's probably not genetically engineered. Correct. Probably. I mean, the, the question I think, and what everybody's concerned about is if they do bring it in, they want to have it labeled. But I just wanted to see the status presently. Is generally, it's not. Okay. Yeah. It's a question. That's all. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Scott. While you're here, I, I, one thing you mentioned, or I've seen you said, I to be very hard on to regulate animal food that was fed Jim uh, Kenyon. I understand that. I, I, I reviewed uh, the Vermont law and a few other laws, and they, they exempt that from regulation. That's correct. If that, um, if, if that aspect of this bill was dropped, would, would that address some of your concerns? Um, some of them. You know, the, the onus with this bill is on the Department of Health for Yeah, it makes it um, a lot easier on that. Thank you. I do have some questions. Oh, I'm sorry, members of the questions. Uh, I have questions for uh, Mr. Manfredi from the Farm Bureau. Gotcha. So part of your testimony was that uh, people have options for avoiding GMO, and you mentioned they can just buy organic. Yes, sir. Do you think that organic food is the same as non-GMO food? Are they the equivalent thing? Uh, I believe that nutritionally uh, they are equivalent, yes. So you, okay. Well, my, okay. My understanding is organic has a whole series of qualifications in addition to being non-GMO. People frequently say that it's more expensive. That's what you're saying, is that's the choice that they should, that, that's the choice they have, they can buy organic and free. Well, I think there's an existing system in place <laughs> by which if someone was so inclined to avoid GMO crops, um, the organic certification label is an assurance of that. Does it cost more, typically? Typically, yes. Okay. Thank you. So uh, my other questions for you is I take very seriously your accusation of my conflict of interest and that I should recuse myself. I'm trying to understand the logic behind it. If you can help me, please. I think that what you're saying is people come to natural food stores in part to avoid GMO products. Is that correct? Uh, I can't speak for everyone. I'm just trying to understand your comment. Um, it's not for me to... Um, decide. I'm not asking. I'm uh, not saying it's be decided. I'm trying to, I, I just, to explain your comment. I mean, why is it that I would be in a conflict of interest if GMO foods were labeled? I would like to understand that because I thought about this a lot and you might have some information I don't have. Um, I would think in the interest of fairness and transparency that I think you should at least disclose um, any potential or perceived conflicts. I'm not saying that you have one. It's just that it, the issue has been raised, and I think in the interest of transparency, that, that I'm all for transparency and I'm all for disclosing conflicts over there. So I'm trying really hard to understand your logic here. In my thoughts on this issue, if someone 
is trying to avoid GMOs. And if GMOs were labeled, then they could shop in any grocery store hmm. and not have to go to a more expensive natural food store. So when, doesn't that drive people away from my stores? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've been listening to conspiracy theories all day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me allow me the latitude to answer. Um, many people say that the initiative behind GMO labeling is to bolster the organic food industry. That's not my position, but that's what a lot of people say. Well, after, after 40 years in the natural foods industry, I've never heard that before. So you must be knowledgeable of different conspiracy theories. <laughs> If GMO foods were labeled, wouldn't people have less reason to seek out organic foods or a natural food store? They can simply go into Safeway and know whether their food is GMO or not. Well, I imagine that's true. Okay, um, I also... I think he's uh, got Okay. And then uh, my last point on that, the definition of uh, conflict of interest here in the Senate is if an action would help my, my business in contrast to other similar businesses. In other words, if it, if it benefits a whole industry, it's not a conflict. If it benefits my company alone, that's a conflict. Do you think that any of this GMO labeling would benefit my company versus every other national food store? Again, it's not my place to decide. I just wanted to <coughs> offer the idea that it should be considered and that any potential or perceived conflicts should be disclosed to keep the integrity of the process above reproach. Thank you very much. I, I will say that, uh, let me let me do what Mr. Enfredi is, I think, suggesting and disclose to everybody that I own natural food stores. And if, that, uh, if that's a potential conflict of interest, and if someone can explain it to me in a, in a sense of logic that I can understand, I will recuse myself. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. I'd like to call up, um, let me see, do I have anyone from DuPont Pioneer or, uh, or or from industry left in the room? No, industry all left, I believe. Do I have anyone from Syngenta here today? There was someone here. I'm sorry? There was someone here. He left. They might be still here. We'll see. Give them a moment. Monsanto? We'll let the record show that they left before questioning. Um, as I recommend, we pass this bill on their behalf. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, members, why don't we, uh, do we have any other questions? Okay, why don't we take a brief recess? Okay, we are uh, nearing the end here of a uh, hearing, uh, committee hearing. <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> Thanks for the camera. How do I get in touch with you guys? Are you guys on Facebook? Or? Yeah, yeah. You on my Facebook? Account? Yeah. What what name? I'm H Doug Matsuoka. H Doug Matsuoka. Yeah. And I do a lot of the live streaming here. I'm Brian, Brian Belize, and that's Brian Derek. Belize. Derek's all over Facebook. Derek, okay. Yeah. He's, you know, tries I to think somebody mentioned him in the comments. He's Big Island, right? You guys are Big Island. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll go, I go hit the ball. I'll find you guys. Yeah, check out uh, Eco Hostel Hawaii. It's our uh, Eco Hostel Hawaii. Okay. I wanted to thank, if you see him, thank him for his testimony. Oh, he'll be back. Okay, good. <laughs> Doug, Matsuoka. Yeah. All right. Nice you guys, uh, ex uh, vets. I guess you're not an ex vet. You're a veteran.
Afghanistan war vets now farming on the Big Island. I'm from the Big Island. I'm from Hilo side. We're taking a little break here. Um, all the industry reps, that is to say, the pesticide corporation people and uh, their lobbyists left uh, before questioning. The senators had asked them to remain for questioning so they could answer uh, questions that uh, might be put to them. The uh, directors of health and agriculture of the state of Hawaii, both state and uh, that is Scott Enright, the director of agriculture, was deputy director in the previous uh, regime under uh, Russell Kokobun, who left um, Oh, and that's, that's Bart Dane. Yes, that Russell Rubin. Huh? Yeah, Russell Rubin challenged the farm guy. Yeah, I definitely do. I got you too, bro. <laughs> that was, that was excellent. That, that, that's going to be one of those clips that get the highlight. So stay tuned for our highlight reel. <laughs> so what we're doing now is uh, there's a recess here. There will be some discussion. They'll decide what to do with this bill, um, whether to forward it into the process so that it has a chance of becoming... Um, a bill or not. Uh, to fill you in, earlier this morning was a hearing on House Bill 1514, I believe, which was to require uh, major users of um, um, restricted use pesticides to disclose uh, what they're using when they were spraying and to observe buffer zones. Um, by schools, hospitals, and that sort of thing. That bill was deferred indefinitely, was in other words killed by the House Agriculture Committee, which, was cha which is chaired by Cliff Tsuji, who is a notorious uh, recipient of bio uh, corporation, of pesticide corporation uh, campaign contribution largesse. But uh, the Senate version, SB 793, is still alive. On the other hand, when it crosses over to the House, we can anticipate the same sort of thing happening. A lot of people uh, flew in from the outer islands, from Kauai, Kauai in the house, Maui in the house, Big Island in the house. They have these... Uh, hearings and uh, different committee hearings throughout the legislative season and people got to fly in. Hawaii does not have um, attendance of these hearings via video and neither do they have uh, testimony via video. Now, the Big Island councils allow uh, video testimony as well as video attendance at several different places on the island and I think uh, that should be required in Hawaii or, or move the hearing to the other island or move the legislative sessions uh, to the other, other islands you know every, every year Ma make it move to the big island Maui uh, and Kauai every year move it to a different island or do video we can do it I mean we can you and I can do it on our phones if we wanted to have this kind of meeting we could have a meeting a Google Hangout meeting and uh, the state can't do it
So thanks for staying with us. Uh. Yeah, to to Martin who's watching. Hi. I believe uh, that is what uh, Josh Green said. We have uh, Suzanne Chan Oakland, uh, Senator Suzanne Chan Oakland, uh, join us. She's been in and out of this meeting. Now, very often the senators will go to their offices. Uh, there are cameras here. There's one there. There's one directly across the room. And there's one there. And generally in the legislator's office can watch any particular hearing. So when they're not here, they're not necessarily uh, ditching. So. <laughs> Hi, more, more people in the outer island. That's, that's Clayton over there, if you don't recognize the top of his head. Hey Clayton, say hello. You're on the you're on the internet, bro. <laughs> now he's running away. Okay. Now the chair of this committee, uh, Josh Green. Josh Green is a uh, doctor, physician on uh, emer emergency room physician, I believe, on the uh, island of, the big island, island of Hawaii, Hawaii Island, Mokuokeaube. Convene where there will be some I believe they have to have a quorum for decision making. Here we go. Thank you everyone for being here. We appreciate you coming back. Um, we're going to uh, go into decision making now on Senate Bill 131 relating to uh, food labeling, specifically labeling of um, genetic, genetically modified food. Uh, the committee chairs and all the members have conferred. Uh, the recommendation is going to be to pass this bill unamended. We do have a little bit of work to do. Um, so first, uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, my co-chair to make some comments for the committee report. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my comments that I'd like to include in the committee report are as follows. Um, the phrase about the animal from which food is, is derived has been fed genetically engineered material. I hope that the next committee will consider dropping that phrase, and I think it's very difficult to enforce. Other states have excluded that. <coughs> I also will suggest that the next committee consider the following suggestions. And the reason we're doing it this way is we are up against the deadline. Amending this bill will be difficult right now. I hope, I hope that the next committee um, will look at this Vermont law, which I will provide to them, and add the phrases of how a retailer or distributor shall not be liable for the failure to properly label um, unless the retailer or distributor is the producer of that food. So the onus for a properly labeling falls on the manufacturer. There's also... Um, that saying if it was produced without the knowing or intentional use of food or seafood of engineering that it's genetic as we that it is um, exempt. And that's all. Thank you very much, Chair. Sure. Members, other comments or discussion? I just, do, I just want to make one quick statement um, before we take the vote. Um, from my perspective, um, look, I'm, I'm a physician, I'm a legislator, and so I'm trying to take uh, a broad view of this issue. Uh, but really, as just a citizen, um, I think that the people of Hawaii 
have a right to know what's in the food that they eat. If the people want to know if there are GMOs in their food, then the legislature should follow their will and pass a simple and effective labeling system. I do think it's time for the legislature to do the right thing, listen to the many, many thousands of people that have been speaking up these last several years, listen to the will of the people on this issue, and pass a measure. So I thank you all for your time today. Thank you, members, for being here with us here to the end of the deadline. Let's, um, let's have a vote. So on the health committee side, first we'll go to Ben. Chair's recommendations to pass SB 131 unamended. Chair Green? Aye. Vice Chair votes with reservations. Senator Baker? Excuse Senator Gabbard? Excuse Senator Revere? Aye. Senator Ruderman? Aye. Senator Sloan? Uh, is excused. Senator Gabbard? We are voting on Senate Bill 131 to GMO labeling and trade recommendations Aye. to pass this measure. <laughs> <laughs> Agriculture, the chair's recommendation is the same. Pass the bill unamended. SB 131 as is. Chair? Aye. aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chan Oakland. Senator Taniguchi excused. Senator Thielen? Yep. Senator Wakai? Reservations. And Senator Sloan excused. Measure passes. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate it. Thank you. SB 131 passes uh, the uh, Health and Agriculture Committee of the Senate to move forward, uh, possibly to become uh, become a law. For now. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to let it run a little bit. In fact, we'll walk out. Um, we will walk out and let the uh, footage run a little bit because live stream, uh, the recording tends to truncate the beginning and end. So I'm going to let it run now. Also, walk out of the chamber and you can kind of get a setting of the. See how. Uh, is it? How's it going? Remember me from about a year ago at the Malacca Hunter March? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've been doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's good. I, I needed some good news. So. <laughs> and this is our uh, state capital. If you haven't been here, it's open. Let's the sun shine in. Sometimes only metaphorically. Uh, and there is the mosaic of the reflecting pond down there. One chamber is the House and the other chamber in the Senate, so that's the, hmm, is that the House or Senate? I can't see. This, we're on the uh, fourth floor, and we'll be signing out. I like the um, architecture of the, uh, the setting generally of the, uh, legislature, although, you know, someone has pointed out to me some symbolism that uh, might be odd, and maybe what I'll do is if I can get him to come here, we can, we can take a look at some of this stuff uh, up close. The other odd thing is that for legislative session, you can't see many people here. They keep saying, you know, it's the people's house. If you go to a shopping mall, any shopping mall, it's going to be packed. But the place where the people's law is made, you saw how the industry, uh, pesticide industry people, uh, left even when uh, they were required to stay for, to answer questions. Uh, I'm going to be signing out soon. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to uh, take some... Uh, Instagrams, I think. And, uh, these two 